Imagine knowing nothing about your childhood, nothing about where you came from, and spending years hunting for the answers. Then, someone hands you a just-discovered trove of photographs of yourself as an infant. You'd finally be able to scrutinize every detail, searching for the clues about yourself and how you came to be the way you are. That's just what it's like for astronomers, as the long-anticipated $10 billion telescope is traveling in space, hoping to discover the most mysterious objects in our universe. If all goes well, it will soon show what the universe looked like as a newborn, nearly 14 billion years ago. It should be able to detect infrared light from galaxies that are so far away that the light from them has been traveling through space for almost the entire history of the universe. It will solve problems like, how did we get here? What is the history of our universe that brought us to the point where we can sit here and think about it? What does it really mean to start at the beginning? How did the very first galaxies form in our universe? Because those are really the building blocks of the Milky Way that we live in. Well, in this video, we're going to explore and take a deep look at the incredible James Webb Space Telescope. We'll look at what it can possibly discover and some interesting facts related to it. So, it's going to be a very interesting video and I would love to see you guys watching it to the end, as this will help you get amazing new insights in the world of astronomy. Let's dive in. First off, one of the foundation principles of relativity is that everything you see is in the past. There's nothing special about telescopes in that regard. It is, in fact, impossible to see the present moment at all. Because light takes time to travel, about a second for every 300,000 kilometers. The image you see of a distant thing has already aged by the time it reached you. You're seeing the thing as it was sometime in the past. It is not noticeable in daily life because light speed is so fast that when you look at something on the other side of the room, it's only a handful of nanoseconds in the past from your perspective. But a space telescope can see distant stars whose light has been traveling for hundreds or thousands of years. In galaxies so far away, we're seeing them as if they were billions of years ago. With the Hubble Space Telescope, we've already been able to watch galaxies shine and stars explode within the first few billion years after the Big Bang itself. Hubble has even caught glimpses of especially bright galaxies in only the first few hundred million years, at a time when the cosmos was only just beginning to become awash with starlight. By studying those images, we're learning about the conditions of the universe back then, how much hotter and more crowded it was, how much ambient gas was ionized by the light of the newborn stars, and how matter was coming together to form the galaxies hosting those stars. And because our own cosmic neighborhood doesn't appear to be unusual in the grand cosmic scheme of things, learning about the early development of some distant part of the cosmos is also telling us about our own past. And the more ordinary that part of the cosmos is, the closer we are to observing the origins of everything around us now. Soon, we'll be able to see more than just the brightest and rarest representations of the first generation of galaxies. With James Webb, we'll be watching the very first collections of stars coming together across the cosmos, lighting up their surroundings and setting the stage for the vast and varied universe we see around us today. Now let's look at some possible discoveries that the James Webb Telescope can bring to life. Understanding how early galaxies formed and grew is one of the big purposes of telescopes. It's actually a time machine because it's looking back in time. Scientists will use Webb's camera to time travel back when the earliest galaxies were forming. 
right after the Big Bang. When we look at distant galaxies light years away, we aren't seeing it in the most recent state. Its distance in light years translates to the number of years it takes for its light to arrive on Earth. For example, the closest galaxy to ours is the Canis Major Dwarf Galaxy, which is 25,000 light years away. So it takes 25,000 years to reach Earth. That means when we look at Canis Major Dwarf, we're seeing it as it was 25,000 years ago. The further into space scientists can look, the further back in time we can observe a galaxy. Webb, being the farthest seeing telescope yet, can root out the youngest looking galaxies humanity can observe. To understand the formation of galaxies, Scientists like Dr. Eisenstein will look at several galaxies at different life stages and piece together their developmental timeline. Webb's infrared capabilities are also crucial for observing these galaxies. Light from distant galaxies will be stretched out by the expanding universe. By the time the light reaches our telescopes, its original wavelength will have shifted from the visible or ultraviolet to the infrared. Luckily, picking up infrared signals is right up Webb's alley. It's the first time we've had a large, cold telescope in space that can observe these infrared wavelengths. The Hubble telescope has managed to capture the shortest wavelength infrared rays stretched from the bluest of light of faraway galaxies. The retired Spitzer Infrared Telescope was much smaller than Webb and couldn't see as far into space. Webb will knock it out of the park in terms of how deep into space and how far back in time it can catch distant galaxies in the act of growing up and detect possible chemical signatures of life on other planets. If life exists outside of Earth, it will release distant chemical signatures such as breathing carbon dioxide and photosynthesizing out oxygen that can transform a planet. Analyzing the chemicals in a planet's atmosphere will not only allow scientists to look for life, but also enable them to assess a planet's habitability. Webb can detect infrared wavelengths for fingerprinting chemicals, such as water and methane present in the atmosphere of exoplanets, which are planets beyond our solar system. Webb contains two instruments that will allow scientists to unravel the wavelengths of infrared signals from solar systems beyond ours, to unweave the colors of the infrared rainbow, so to speak. When an exoplanet photobombs a star that our telescopes are gazing at, the starlight will experience a dip in certain energies corresponding to the chemicals in the exoplanet's atmosphere. If Webb happens to be looking at the right star, at the right time, it can chemically analyze the atmosphere of the star's planet by analyzing the blip in the starlight. Exoplanet science as a field is pretty new. Since the first exoplanet discovery in 1992, scientists have found thousands of exotic planets teeming in the universe. They're everywhere. However, Humanity's understanding of these exoplanets has barely extended beyond the fact that they're there. It's challenging for current technology, such as Hubble or on-Earth infrared telescopes, to carry out infrared spectroscopy on new exoplanets of interest. Hubble works with a much narrower band of infrared energies compared to Webb. Ground observatories are shrouded in Earth's atmosphere which itself is an absorber and scatterer of infrared light. The Earth also emits background infrared radiation that would overwhelm the faint signals coming from the deep cosmos. In space, where Webb will be, Earth's atmosphere and warm radiating surface are out of the way for an unobstructed view of the night sky. The birthplaces of stars are full of dust. While they make for breathtaking photos, the dust blocks scientists from peering right into the heart of these clouds when they look at them with visible light. Luckily, infrared light from stars can penetrate through the dust to give scientists a whole new take on an old view. 
red light can pass through the dust in the Earth's atmosphere better than the shorter wavelengths, the blue lights. The same principle explains why infrared light can penetrate even further through dusty galaxies than visible light. If you look at the setting sun, it tends to look much redder than when you look at it in the daytime. It's the same thing. Hubble's limited infrared capabilities have barely scratched the surface for studying stellar formation. Webb's broader infrared range will enable scientists to peer deeper into the dust. Young stars emerge from the dustiest pockets, where it's most challenging to see through. Thanks to Webb's high infrared sensitivity and spectacular resolution, scientists might be able to sift through the dust to make out these infant stars with unprecedented detail. And Webb might help scientists figure out how the dust cooks up a star, why stars form in clusters, and how planets form around a star. Nothing can escape a black hole, not even light. So technically, black holes are invisible. Luckily, swirling around black holes is plenty of stuff we can see. Stars, dust, and entire galaxies. To study black holes, scientists scrutinize this stellar menagerie, similar to studying a shadow to learn about its shadow-casting object. In the past, Scientists have used X-ray telescopes to study specific kinds of physics of black holes. These telescopes look at phenomena that are millions of degrees hot and high enough to produce X-rays, such as the violent shredding of stars wandering too close to a black hole. Webb's infrared instruments will allow scientists to see different goings-on in a black hole's corner, particularly the cooler gases and stars dancing around their invisible neighbor. Where stars congregate is a dusty place. Luckily, Webb's infrared eye will allow scientists to peer past the dusty curtain and see through it all. Webb will provide valuable data to peek into the temperatures, speeds, and chemical compositions of the stellar cloaks of black holes. Scientists can use this data to learn more about the mass and size of the black hole and more about how it snacks on a star. How are stars and planets formed? Star systems are formed inside stellar nebula and are often obstructed by dust. Because of this, the exact dynamics of star system formation are still not well categorized. For example, we are not sure if our solar system is typical or atypical, or why most stars form in groups according to NASA. The Webb Telescope should enable us to imagine the inside of these systems and capture photoplanet and photostar formation. Determining if our solar system is typical or atypical may also help us better understand our place in the universe. The great inventor and science fiction author Sir Arthur C. Clarke put it best when he said, two possibilities exist. Either we are alone in the universe or we are not. Both are equally terrifying. What did the first galaxies and stars look like? The first several hundred million years of the universe's existence are shrouded in mystery. Our models of how the first stars and galaxy formed, riding on the condensation of dark matter halos, are lacking observational data to either confirm or falsify them. This is because the early universe is only visible in infrared, requiring a telescope of JWST's scale to image. Using data collected from these observations, we will be able to answer questions about how the first stars and galaxy formed in the universe, which will have profound implications for our cosmological models, especially regarding the great mystery of dark matter. What is the true rate of universal expansion? Recently, cosmologists have found discrepancies in different measurements of the rate of the universe's expansion. This discrepancy is known as the Hubble tension, and it stems from making measurements of the local galaxies in the cosmic microwave background and comparing notes. But the precision of local measurements is notably obscured by dust, something that JWST can address. 
With newer, more precise measurements, astronomers will learn whether this discrepancy indicates new physics or is simply measurement error. Final Thoughts James Webb has the potential to completely rewrite our understanding of the universe. From how galaxies and stars are formed to the structure of planetary systems. And that's not even mentioning the possible scientific inquiry into signs of alien or intelligent life. We truly are living during the most exciting time ever in human history. That wraps up the video. I hope you enjoyed it and if you did, make sure to give it a thumbs up. Subscribe to our channel and don't forget to press the bell icon to see more videos about our amazing world.